Huge developments, big news all today. I have been covering these issues now for some time and we are really unfolding and unraveling as I speak. The first thing I want to talk about is the market turbulence. You have seen some people come in and already buy up this dip. I'm going to give you all the details surrounding it and of course the economy. The second thing I want to look at is the hungry inflation. Why hungry? Because it never seems to get enough. It's always eating away at your hard-earned savings. And the third thing I want to look at is Evergrande Deep. Evergrande goes much deeper than what you think. All of that and more. Let's go. So before we get into the depths of what's happening with Evergrande, there's a lot of important information that's going to take us there. High pressure week for global markets starts with steep losses. So of course you had Monday's trading session, did not look very good. At the end of the day, however, markets started to come up rapidly as the algorithms and then the investors coming in behind that to buy up the dip. Iron ore tumbles as China steel curbs weigh on demand. That's important because we have seen just about every commodity rise, but more recently, iron ore has come down. So that's important. Two events right now, two events this week. I talked about this in the previous video, which I'll link to at the end of this one. But essentially, we're looking at the FOMC meeting and we're also looking at Evergrande. Big news is going to come out this week. The SMP has said, SMP has said specifically that they do not foresee the government stepping in and bailing out Evergrande. Can you believe this? Look at this. Speaking of S&P, the stock market index, it nears the first 5% pullback since late last year. We hadn't seen this before. I had talked about this recently, suggesting that we had six the six biggest banks in the US say Look, we haven't had a 5% pullback in a long time. It is overdue for one. I showed you that chart, and now you can see we're getting closer to that number now. China property fear spreads beyond Evergrande, roiling the markets. Remember, it's not just one company. People believe all the time, oh, this is where it is. This is where it's contained, just like subprime. But it goes deeper than that, and I will bring you more news around it. Okay, so you can see the Hong Kong developers fall on concern. China will target housing. Evergrande faces interest payments on bank loans and bonds. Like I said, a lot deeper than that, but I just want to show you. So you have Evergrande being the problem, then it spreads out to the other developers, and then it goes out from there. But beyond that, actually, if you remember, tech stocks in China had been already coming down previous to that. Deserted factories show how China electric car boom went too far. This reminds me of what we saw with the ghost cities in China. At least a dozen EV makers are bankrupt and restructured in the past year. Here you go. Empty, empty, empty. There's more pictures here. All empty. Okay. That is never a good sign. So you could see all of these different industries starting to spiral down. Okay. Could these eventually be in operation? Yeah, absolutely. But what's happening right now? Tech stocks, you got the EV, you got developers right now, all hitting home right now in China. And then you've got this. This is always terrible, but you know, those in the industry don't see it like that. But junk debt soar, sales soar towards a record year. Issuance of bonds and loans from companies with speculative grade uh, debt uh, credit ratings has already hit a one year high. And why? 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 Because they need more yield. That's what they need to achieve. If you're not going to get it with a German bond, you're going to go and seek something that's going to give you that yield. So you see it. Crazy, crazy, but that's the way it is. Earnings alarm bells ringing for market showing signs of fatigue. And that's the important part here because you've got companies like they say, the paint companies, PP Industries, Sherwin-Williams, and all these other ones in the industry that are saying inflation is hitting us hard. We can't deal with this much longer. It's hitting the bottom line. We're increasing the prices and still more inflation comes in. Like I said, it's a hungry inflation. I always think of it like Pac-Man. It never seems to have, you know, it lost its appetite. It just keeps going and going and going. 
unprecedented inflation? That's what CEOs see. No, prices aren't spiraling all the way that they did in the 1970s, but expectations matter. And manufacturing CEOs are speaking a different language than investors. So this is important because it is actually heading up to the levels of the 1970s. We're not done the cycle yet. Remember that wherever you think inflation is going to go, we're certainly not done at this point. Where will it be by the time it starts heading downward? Okay, that's so key. It's so important. And then we've got this always funny Washington gridlock and a debt ceiling showdown are weighing on the market. They're making it like, you know, they're in this boxing match and they're so tough and they're really out there to help the people to make sure that they get their stimulus or the infrastructure and all this stuff. And meanwhile, it's all a show that they put on. But it's just the way it is. All right. PMIs. This is important because you could see the industry, you could see inflation, you could see manufacturing, you could see the economy and all of these different things. There's a million different ways to measure it, but take a look at the PMI specifically. PMIs are headed lower, we think. This is according to Morgan Stanley. And then on the right-hand side, which doesn't bode well for the S&P, because if you see that, the correlation is clearly there. When the economy is doing well, in general, not the real economy, of course, but their measures of the economy, and then the stock market can go along with it. But when that comes down, not so good. I want to summarize what's happening right here in the Money GPS Insights. Before we look at what's happening with Evergrande on a deeper level, first we need to understand the markets haven't had a 5% pullback in many months. The six biggest US banks have said this is overdue. In the meantime, investors had come in and bought the dip. They refused to wait. And right now, specifically, the most important thing to understand is that the crisis going on with Evergrande has begun to spread. So be mindful of what's happening. Okay, so I'm about to hit you with a lot of information. As always, the links will be in the description under the sources. Let's do this. Chinese property developer Cynic halts trading after sinking 87%. That's another one. What about this? The global economy could feel the effects of China's Evergrande crisis. Here's what investors should know. The uh, officials are expected to stem the spillover from liquidity issues at Evergrande. Already, you have seen the central bank coming in, pumping in money. But that doesn't help Evergrande and it doesn't help the other layers. It simply keeps the system running. The country's largest property developer before it's Evergrande, before it slams the banking system and bleeds into for, uh, finan foreign financial sectors. But strategists also say that Beijing needs to act quickly to restructure Evergrande because the markets have become nervous and it's hurting sentiment. The problems that the property developer could damage China's economy and from there also dent the world economy. Some are calling this the Lehman Brothers moment for China and what could happen. Others are saying absolutely not a concern. Hong Kong real estate giants, including Henderson Land Development Co., suffered the biggest sell-off in more than a year as traders speculated China will extend its property clamp down to the financial hub. You got the tech side, you got the EVs, you got the, you know, the home builders and the you know, commercial builders, and all of these things are all happening at once right now. Intensifying concerns about Evergrande debt crisis dragged down everything from bank stocks to Ping and Insurance Group Co. This is another one that has been brought down. Insurance companies, where have we heard this one before? AIG, anybody? Different story, of course, but who knows what will happen in the coming days. This is the week right now, okay? So everybody's got to pay attention. That's why I'm hitting this topic hard. So they're talking about more of the details here of the stocks and so on. But look at this. Evergrande has sold wealth management products to its employees, suppliers, and apartment buyers over the year. We don't know how much is at stake. It was essentially off-balance sheet shadow banking, which means its actual debt could be much greater. 
the debt right now that they're talking about, the $305 billion of balance sheet liabilities, it goes beyond that, beyond that. And that means, of course, it's spreading to average people, okay? It's not just this company. It's not just the employees, by the way, they, they mention it in here somewhere, they have like something like 200,000 employees and then that, that extends out further to how many families are, would be affected by that. But this is big, okay? About 70,000 retail investors were tied up in these products. So how much could they have? I'm not sure, but remember, it's not just about that one because it spreads very, very fast, okay? They're calling this a off-balance sheet shadow banking. This is huge. Bloomberg says the off-balance sheet uh, funding is often masked as equity offerings that are debt-like in nature. Another avenue is to provide guarantees on joint ventures or associates that, uh, that borrow on behalf of the developers. Funding sourced via such guarantees for joint ventures accounted for about 9% of total debt issued by the developers last year, reaching a record 460 billion yuan, which is $71 billion. It's not a small sum when you think about it, okay? There's a lot more here. I don't know if I can get into all of this, but essentially it's going in right here. What they say, companies that rely on joint ventures for financing could see off balance sheet debt accounting for as much as 40% of their debt. So think about that. This could absolutely spiral out of control. Nobody knows what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Bloomberg doesn't know what's going to happen. Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, all these different companies do not know what's going to happen. We will only know in time, but understand that this is bigger than what it was made to be initially. And there are others out there saying they've been bailed out. I, I literally saw that title. China bails out Evergrande. That has not happened yet at all. So ask for clarification on that from those people who are saying it. Look, there's, there's so much in here from Reuters. from Everybody has put their two cents in here, and this is so key. But what about this one? It goes further. Evergrande bosses face severe punishment after securing early redemptions. It, uh, executives exited the funds as Chinese developer delayed repayments to retail investors. Wow, six senior uh, Evergrande executives, they're getting, well, you know what's going to happen to them. Um, just showing you how bad this can be. Of course, they're going to know beforehand. Of course. You've got a problem here because, number one, the debt, that's the most important factor, but also the properties are just sitting there. They're not completed. People are, you know, they poured so much money into them to, to get them developed. But at the same time, people are buying these products, like buying debt essentially from them, becoming bondholders in a sense. Now we go really, really deep into this one. And I know for a fact, I'm not gonna be able to get into it at all. But if you have the time, check this one out, okay? How Evergrande could turn into China's Lehman Brothers. So this goes way, way deep. And uh, just showing you here, if I could just pull up a couple stats, Evergrande owes more than $124 billion within a year. It only, uh, while it only a tenth of that amount of cash on hand, but actually when you look at it, they have essentially no cash. They use maximum leverage and they, they love that. These businesses do love that. A bankruptcy would amount to a financial tsunami or as some analysts put it, China's Lehman Brothers. Looking at this, as liabilities are equivalent to about 2% of China's GDP, which is a significant number. It has more than 200,000 employees. I was correct, I remembered who themselves and many of their families have invested billions of yuan into the company's WMPs, which we talked about a moment ago. The company had more than 800 projects under construction, more than half of them halted due to its cash crunch. Okay, They're calling this the too big to fail. Evergrande's crisis has fueled speculation on whether the government will step in. Like I said, Standard & Poor's said that they will not do a bailout for them, it's gonna send the wrong message. We'll see what happens. Maybe they'll do it in a backdoor kind of way. Okay, 
uh, as they say here, Evergrande denied that they will go bankrupt. They're going to do what they can. They're going to essentially have talks with other companies who would then come in, buy up their assets, the ones that they want, and then maybe they'll let some of the rest go. The stock continues to decline. I haven't checked it today, actually, but it continues to decline. It's not looking good. Who knows where it will all be at before this is all said and done. So they, they're talking about the internal fundraising campaign, which is essentially to get those uh, individuals to buy in, buy in, and saying, as they say in here, saying that you know, you're going to get a good return. They didn't get that return in which they were expected. And so on. It just goes into how they were kind of what what it seems like they were kind of screwing over everybody involved, hoping that hey, this you know the greater fool theory and so on. We'll, we'll worry about it later, and and uh, who knows what kind of um, things were happening uh, behind the curtain. We really don't know. There is so much in here. I would recommend checking it out. Okay. Look at what Goldman had to say. Goldman Sachs had a few things in these two charts over here showing you the direct effects, the indirect effects, and the financial conditions tightening, okay? Just things like the property contribution to construction. Obviously, they shut that down. You don't need the iron ore. You have that direct effect. Indirect effect, something like the real estate services impact on the financial services because if the bank isn't doing the loans and they're not making all these things happen, that's going to have an effect on their business and so on. Okay. And who knows what's going to happen with the credit growth slowdown. Will we see that credit, you know, basically, you know, the drying up on the, on the real side. And then you have the central bank coming in to kind of fill in the gap. Who knows who really knows. And then the three scenarios of the property market impact on growth. This is just Goldman Sachs putting out, some theories we don't know but the the impact will in fact be negative we do know that and i just wanted to throw this one in at the end over here I talked about iron ore on one side but look at this surging fertilizer cost risks making food even pricier next year this is what's going on all around us if you remember i talked about in the money gps trifecta method of investing i specifically mentioned fertilizer this is so key. I hope you watched that. If you didn't, it's in the playlist that I have, the very first video in that playlist I have on my channel. So definitely check it out. I got so much more to get into on the Evergrande situation, on China, on the markets, on the economy and inflation and everything else. And if you want to know it all, you've got to be an insider. It's right here up at this card. It's free or you could uh, take a look at themoneygps.com. If you haven't supported the channel already, you definitely want to do that because a thumbs up is all it takes. When you give a thumbs up, you help print more money for all of those people to get it when they rain it from the helicopter. So if you want to see some of that money raining down, hit that like button. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.